Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 17th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Back in January, Ukrainian law enforcement and others uh, took down uh, the principles behind the Emotet botnet. And since then, there hasn't really been uh, much uh, to be said about Emotet. It was pretty much dead, but sadly not dead for good. As of this week, we start having new Emotet samples arriving in victims' inboxes. And I guess to celebrate, uh, Brad did publish a diary today with one of his famous walkthroughs of an Emotet infection and what kind of traffic uh, this botnet is generating. One of the reasons that Emotet is so dangerous is uh, the emails that it crafts are crafted as replies to actual emails. So as soon as a victim is compromised, it pilfers uh, recent emails in the victim's inbox and replies to these emails, including its malicious attachment. The attachment itself, well, nothing really all too special. It's a Microsoft Office document with a macro and, of course, a message asking the user to enable macros so it can do its evil thing. One thing Pratt pointed out that changed is that additional downloads and the command control mechanism now uses HTTPS. Uh, prior versions have done this via HTTP. So Office macros still remain sort of one of the uh, major issues here that you need to get a handle on. And of course, that's not just because of Emotet. Uh, There are plenty of other pieces of malware that take advantage of essentially the same trick, trying to get users to enable macros in order to then download and run additional uh, malware. And as far as Emotet goes, I don't think the use of HTTPS is adding sort of a new significant barrier to detection. And GitHub, who is maintaining the NPM registry, has published a brief blog post outlining two vulnerabilities that were recently addressed in the NPM registry and some of the security enhancements planned for the near future. First of all, the vulnerabilities. The first one potentially did expose the presence and the names of internal NPM packages. This, of course, uh, could be uh, dangerous with respect to some name confusion issues that we talked about in the past. This was corrected. Secondly, there's also another corrected flaw that was actually discovered as part of the GitHub bug bounty program. And this would allow an attacker to publish a new version of any package out there bypassing proper authorization checks. In the blog post, uh, GitHub is also recognizing that the two methods how malicious code is usually introduced is number one, where a legitimate maintainer's account is compromised. Now, GitHub is going uh, to essentially roll out two-factor authentication as being mandatory for maintainers starting with some of the more popular packages. Secondly, of course, sometimes a malicious actor may just publish a malicious package or a package that seems to have a use but also includes malicious code. Well, GitHub is trying to prevent that by proactively scanning new submitted packages for malicious components. And Intel released a security bulletin regarding CVE 2021-0146. This is a approach escalation vulnerability in many of the more recent Intel CPUs from Atom all the way up to some of the Pentium desktop mobile and embedded processors. The problem here is that a user with physical access to the system is able to enable a debug mode without any additional authentication. Of course, once the system is in debug mode, it does provide access to other users and to restricted information, which could then in turn be used to, for example, steal cryptographic keys or other information. The vulnerability was originally discovered by Positive Technologies and a bias update should become available that will mitigate this vulnerability. So apply it as it becomes available from your particular systems manufacturer. 
And I mentioned before that it's difficult sometimes uh, to track uh, the current firmware versions or vulnerabilities in uh, routers. And I usually suggest to sort of have a monthly router patch day where you basically just proactively check if there's a new firmware available for your particular router slash firewall. Well, uh, there is now a little bit help, at least in order to get a handle on this problem. And that's a list that Modemly Pulse put together. It does cover 17,000 different routers and don't really see easily how many vulnerabilities in these routers. It says here 1,150 routers with security issues. And essentially what they're doing is they're searching the national vulnerability database and then organize the vulnerabilities they found by router manufacturers. So you can easily look up the particular router model that you own and see if there are any recent vulnerabilities discovered. Of course, uh, the National Vulnerability Database typically only lists vulnerabilities that were announced by the manufacturer or researchers. In this space, sadly, there are many vulnerabilities that are never really sort of properly announced. And uh, if they're patched, the patch may not necessarily tell you that it patched an important or even critical vulnerability. So I think uh, still stick to the monthly router update day. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.